Hi friends, and welcome back to a new episode of Let's Talk Elvis. I'd like to talk to you a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of the things that happened from, uh, from my side of the story, uh, there's been a lot written and a lot said about what happened to me, but uh, never from my side. So disclaimer before we start, I do not make these episodes to give excuses for any of Elvis's behavior or choices. I simply add context and explanation and research into topics relating to Elvis that I am passionate about because I truly believe that he deserves that. So today, I have been saying this almost for every single episode that I have been making recently, but I truly really mean it today and that is that this episode I have been wanting to make it for a while, um, but it's just one of those ones that I held off on so I could get the most effective amount of research information, facts into this video that I can because it is a touchy subject. We're going to be discussing today, does Elvis deserve the title King of Rock and Roll? People have been questioning whether or not Elvis deserves this title for as long as anyone can remember. They often take that title away from him and place the crown on another person in music history, such as Little Richard or Chuck Berry, etc. What a lot of people don't know is that Elvis rejected this title profusely and never referred to himself as the king of anything. He would often say, no, I'm not the king, I'm just an entertainer, Jesus Christ is the king, things like that. Music is so often attributed to and associated with someone's culture, which can often lead to segregation within the bounds of recording music. Elvis was frowned upon by critics for endorsing endorsing black music and bringing it to white teens. However, these barriers were ultimately just another way to keep people separated, to enforce racism and even the smallest forms of media. Elvis became a threat when he started singing that kind of music to a white teenage audience. People often think that Elvis was seen as evil purely for the controversial way that he moved or gyrated on stage, which is true. But that wasn't the only reason that he had America in upheaval. His singing was so unique that the closest thing it could be compared to at the time was that of the rhythm and blues and soul and country styles that the black people of the time exhibited. Not only was Elvis supposedly toying with the morals and the personal thoughts of the young generation of the day, but he was also exposing them to music that they were not meant to listen to. You have to remember that young teens of this time were supposed to be listening to people like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and other crooners of that sort. Rock and roll as a genre did not yet exist. So when Elvis rose to fame, he rose quickly. White teen America controlled popularity and record sales. They controlled who was talented and who should be listened to and who was in and who they didn't vibe with. Black teens were not being catered to in that way. But nonetheless, both white and black teenagers loved Elvis. Black teens most likely liked Elvis because he was familiar, he had a familiar sound, and white teenagers loved Elvis because he had a completely different, unique, new, sound that they have never heard before. It was different from anything they had ever heard. Elvis had the whole package. He was classy yet sexy and funny yet respectful. And he had the talent to match. He didn't have to put on an act. It was natural for him to perform the way that he did. So a lot of people throw around their opinion that Elvis, because he was white and privileged, stole that music from black people and profited off of their music in ways that they could not have done. They think that he stole the music from black people who could not perform their art as freely as he could. I I wanna make an entire new episode, an updated version on this topic, um, but I'm gonna try to sum it up as best as I can for now. Elvis grew up in the poorest part of the Deep South. He grew up in all black communities, went to all black churches, and attended all black community events from childhood. Elvis had the deepest respect for all different kinds of singers, but this like rhythm and blues, soul, country kind of sound that the black people of the time were so well known for was what held the most special place in his heart because that's what he grew up with and that's what he knew so well. You have to ask yourself, is it a question of race music or is it a question of cultural music? Because not every black person comes from the same place. There's a story of Sammy Davis Jr. turning down the opportunity to record in the ghetto because he decided to give it to Elvis because he did not grow up in the ghetto and he knew that Elvis did. Even though Elvis was white, he grew up in this community where he was almost viewed as one of the same of the black people who really 
were so deep in poverty and had really no other options and no opportunities. Elvis gave credit always. He knew that he did not invent rock and roll because the styles that make up rock and roll were there long before he was around. He was quoted saying things like, a lot of people seem to think I started this business, but rock and roll was here a long time before I came along. Nobody can sing that kind of music like colored people. Let's face it, I can't sing like Fats Domino can. I know that. He often credited his inspiration and motivation to get into the business to many people and never ever excluded his African-American roots. On top of that, many black artists are quoted saying that Elvis opened the doors for their voices to be heard and for their voices to be recognized by the masses. Elvis basically rejected that line of segregation and said that music is music and it can be enjoyed by anybody and everybody no matter the color of your skin. To quote Maggie once more, she has said in her Instagram stories that Elvis was not blind to the issues black people had to face. He was opposed to taking them and their contributions for granted. Instead, he embraced the culture that he was surrounded by and showed people who were ignorant and fearful of such things. Many black artists of the time credit Elvis for helping them break through to the mainstream as he made rock and roll popular enough for listeners to branch out to the other artists. I always think if he intended to steal rock and roll and he intended to claim that sound for his own and take it from the black people and use that to make himself rise in popularity. Don't you think he would have made it known that that sound was his when the black artists rose to popularity later on? Instead, he openly gave credit where it was due. And he always shed light on his inspirations for getting him where he was at now. Another little thing to think about is when someone cites a source in an essay, you don't say that, oh, they're stealing from that person. They're stealing that information or they're plagiarizing from that person. You would never say that because they cited where they got that information. They gave credit to whatever inspired them to say, act, or in this case, sing like they do now. They are acknowledging that they were inspired to do whatever they're doing by another source. To use an analogy shared with me by Sally Hodel, if asked, 90% of people would say that Henry Ford invented the car, but Henry Ford did not invent the car. What he did do was invent the assembly line, which basically made the car affordable to the masses, to the average American. 800 other people at the time were trying to invent a good car. But Henry Ford gets the credit for providing Americans with an affordable quality car. The same goes for Elvis. When he appeared on TV, he became a household name. He was on every television in America. He was made accessible to the masses. Oh, he did not invent rock and roll. He opened the doors for it to be heard and enjoyed by everyone. He opened the doors for other artists to be discovered and have their voices heard and have credit paid to them where it was due. This embodied a sound that had its roots in the deep South, but was also so fresh and new to the young generation. He catered to everyone. I wanna end off with a quote from the book Destined to Die Young, which I think summarizes this topic pretty nicely. Without George Washington, we might have had a long dynasty of kings at the helm. Without Thomas Jefferson, we might not have had the words, all men are created equal, in which to root the evolution of freedom. Without Henry Ford, perhaps cars would still be available only for wealthy people. Without Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights movement of the 1960s may have been fruitless. Without Elvis Presley, all the music that came after him would not have happened when it did or in the same way. Elvis contributed to American fabric and changed the entire world with a cultural impact that could never be equaled. That is all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and the thumbs down if you didn't. And if you're watching this on Instagram, make sure to follow me for more Let's Talk Elvis videos and more insight into Elvis's life, not only as the amazing entertainer that he was, but the even more amazing human being that he was. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.